in players on the football stock market. It was a very, very clever concept. This is Football Index. You're in control. So the fact I was trading above average, to me, was an indication that I was making good decisions. In a hotel near Southampton, David Hamill shows me how seriously he monitored his money. He spent most of his working life in banking and the financial services, and his spare time watching football. So when an app came along that appeared to combine investing and his favourite sport, he was interested. I very quickly got hooked on the concept and the game, and it was addictive, and yeah, I really enjoyed playing it. His small deposits grew, and before long, David put redundancy cash and some of his pension into Football Index. How much money had you put into the platform? By the time the, the platform had collapsed, I probably put in just over £100,000, which now sitting here today seems crazy, but at the time it seemed like I was making good decisions and using my football knowledge. When the company teased a big announcement, customers got excited. We'd been told that, um, you know, they'd never been in a stronger financial position. But the news wasn't what they expected. And suddenly, David's £104,000 was gone. It was just shock, really. And um, telling my wife, it was just sickening. And I actually was physically sick as a result of the fact that the prices of all players, so these weren't bad bets, you know, all players dropped by 80, 90% and there was panic. And real money if your players rise in value. Football Index customers bought shares in football players. These were bets that a player would be successful so users could later sell their shares for a higher price. Customers could also get bonus cash payments known as dividends if their footballer performed well in real life. Users could buy and sell shares between each other or back to Football Index. The site started in 2015 and grew quickly. Nearly six years later, customers had £124 million worth of open bets in Football Index. But the arrival of COVID-19 caused problems for the platform. In 2020, when the pandemic stopped football matches, Football Index had to keep its market stable and make sure panicked customers didn't take out all their money at once. So it made it harder to cash out bets and double dividend or bonus payments to try and keep customers happy. This was expensive though and didn't bring in new users. So then they tried cutting the company's costs, but that didn't work either. And in March 2021, Football Index collapsed and admitted it didn't have the money to cover customer funds. 120 million doesn't just evaporate overnight. It clearly didn't have the cash on account or the assets to back that up and pay them out. Paul Carlier is a financial expert who investigates investment scams and the actions of industry regulators. It was quite evident that it needed a constant supply of new money uh, to keep going. Well, that's a classic flag for a, for a Ponzi scheme. It, it represents itself as an investment, but the gains are actually being paid from new money that's, being, that's coming in. It's almost like a conveyor belt. Tackle Toddy. There are Football Index customers all over the country. Many felt they'd found a way to make money from a hobby, a sport they love and have grown up watching or playing. Great goal, Jim. Here in Norwich, Frank Wright enjoys five-a-side football a couple of times a week. Unlucky Tommy. He's been a bookmaker for nearly 20 years. I'm on a very low salary and it seemed the only possible way I was going to be able to make any kind of real life change in money you know uh, what started off as an initial sort of interest and a hobby you know it absorbed all my time it absorbed all my money um, and um, yeah uh, it, it nearly broke me. Frank had put £14,000 into Football Index but around half of that was from credit cards after he saw a suggestion made by one of the company's co-founders, Adam Cole. What you've got to do is max out your credit card, effectively, <laughs> for it. Um, and that's, that's your leverage. And as long as you beat the APR on your credit card. <laughs> His statement definitely influenced me. I mean, I can say in hindsight it was silly, but uh, yeah, I wasn't the only one taken in. Yeah. 
Football Index is reinventing football betting. Football Index was aggressively marketed by Adam Cole and another co-founder, Mike Bowen, who pushed their product onto football fans and sold it as a safe place for their money. That three-year bet does yeah. provide like quite a lot more stability, I'd argue, than um, you know, W. H. Smiths and giving well, a profit warning. For it's instance. got a guaranteed yield. Adam Cole has proved elusive. With Football Index on the brink of disaster, he stood down as CEO in late 2020, and some think he may have fled abroad. But we did track down Mike Bowen, who was in charge when it went bust. Mr Bowen, I'm Ellie Pitt from ITV News. You didn't respond to our letter about Football Index and what happened with the collapse. Don't you think the customers of Football Index deserve to hear your side of the story? It's been revealed in Parliament that the Insolvency Service is investigating the conduct of the directors. While those who've lost life savings are still waiting to find out exactly where their money went. I lost everything. And if they'll see any of it again. Oh, it's just heartbreaking, isn't it? it we saw you there trying to challenge one of Football uh, Index directors. No luck, nice try. But, I mean, shouldn't it have been regulated by the authorities anyway? Well, that's the thing, Mary. It was. It was licensed and regulated by the Gambling Commission. But because it had those stock market features, in May 2019, the Gambling Commission went to the Financial Conduct Authority and asked whether it should also regulate football index. At first, the SCA said yes but then later changed its mind. And for nearly two years, there was back and forth between the Gambling Commission and the SCA about who should be responsible for regulating football index and protecting its customers. Because during all that time, they'd been putting more money into the platform. Well, the Gambling Commission has told me that their regulation does not include real-time monitoring of the financial health of the company or provide financial protections if the business fails, but they do appreciate the hurt customers feel. The SCA has also said it has every sympathy for those who lost money through the collapse and admitted its communication with the Gambling Commission should have been better. Well, that's really important because the Gambling Commission has told me that there are more and more of these products which blur the lines between gambling, gaming and investing coming into the market. Yeah. Horrible, horrible story. Ellie, thank you. OK, well, let's get an update.